So welcome to Business Spotlight Series. I'm Paul McCarthy and today I'm joined by Sarah Wiley from It's Pizzazz. Sarah, it's great to have you with us today. Um, could you start by telling us a bit about your, your business and how long you've been? Yeah, of course. Thank you for having me. Um, so the business that I run is It's Pizzazz. Um, we're a social media company and um, it's been in business for the last five years. So we create content, we manage social media profiles, and we complete social media advertising for our clients across the UK. When you say our clients, is is, is there other team members within It's Pizzazz? Yes, um, there's currently four of us. Um, so we have a salesperson and then two social media managers, as well as myself. Fantastic. And are, are they recent recruits? Is it been growing over the recent last few years? Yeah, it has. Um, so I took on the first social media manager about a year and a half ago. And then um, the salesperson started about a year ago. And then the second social media manager started just in December. So three months ago now. Fantastic. Oh, quite quite rapid growth then recently. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> And who are your clients? Who 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 are the who are your traditional sort of clients? What sort of size? Um, we have all types of clients. We don't really specialize in a particular industry. It keeps it quite exciting for us to work across a lot of different industries. Um, so we have clients across the board from sole traders um through to um, bigger clients who employ kind of at the minute, I think our biggest client probably has around 10 to 15 employees um, but we have worked with clients who've got up to 150 employees in the past so a real length and breadth of type of businesses yep. yeah yeah we go for from really really small micro businesses up to quite quite big businesses really and are you finding what you do becoming more of a necessity something like having an accountant having somebody doing your social media is it, is it going that way yeah definitely um there's so many different people that um who have never used social media before who are now thinking you know it's the right time we need to do that now um I spoke to someone just this week who's never done it before and um they're thinking you know we actually need to be on there because there's so many people um well actually the majority of people actually use some form of social media in their life um you know whether it is for business or pleasure so it's definitely becoming more of a necessity for people to to go out there, use social media and actually have quality, effective um, content on there as well. Makes a lot of sense. Makes a lot of sense. So what was your background and, and why did you start It's Pizzazz? Um, so this is a bit of a strange one. Um, like, I don't know if I don't know what the um, what the norm would be, but I never set out to to have a business and never set out to be a business owner. Um, so I worked for a large company um, I managed a department um, and I kind of got to a point where I felt like I was a little bit stuck in a rut. Um, there was a big restructure and I looked through all of the new job titles and there was just nothing that caught my eye. Um, so I decided to apply for voluntary redundancy and luckily it was accepted. Um, <laughs> I went off traveling for seven months. So I went to Asia for seven months, kind of thinking about what I wanted to do. And when I came back, I started just applying for similar jobs to what I'd had before. Um, I didn't really have an idea in mind of where I wanted to be or what I wanted to do. Um, and through those applications for jobs, I actually met someone who just kind of said, you know, why don't you start your own business? You've got so much experience. Um, why don't you do it? And that kind of prompted me into setting up my own business and looking into it. And I think the business was re was registered um, about a week after that conversation. Wow. So it was a really, really strange kind of introduction into um, being a business owner, really. Um, so, yeah, I set up the business and... Um, Initially, I was just looking at doing marketing in general, so all different types of marketing, not just focusing on social media. Um, I spent a year training with a company in America, you know, to focus more on the smaller businesses rather than, you know, bigger corporate companies, um, which was really, really helpful. And um, then 
after that decided to go down the social media route because that's what a lot of people were looking for so yeah that was my introduction it wasn't really something that was ever planned like most people would do I would imagine <laughs> fantastic you fell into it I think a lot of business owners share that story so yeah oh that's good to know then I'm not I'm <laughs> yeah, <sorry>. absolutely <laughs> um so what what what's what's your secret sauce so what 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 do you do really really well um, so I think that because we specialize in social media, you know, that is the only thing that we do. We're really, really good at what we do. Um, so we create brilliant content for our clients and we get really good results from it. Um, you know, we we always ask what customers are looking for and then we try to achieve um, their goals through our recommendations for what should be completed on social media. And um, quality and customer satisfaction is really important for us. Um, we do pride ourselves that we have got a lot of long-standing customers. We don't um, have a high turnover. We have clients who've been with us for a long, long time now. Um, and we do have really good processes in place now to maintain our customer satisfaction um, and hopefully not gain any complaints. <laughs> so relationships are important to you, your customers. Really important, yeah. yeah. I mean, we have clients, you know, that we've never met in person before, but we'll always try to keep in touch with them regularly um, through kind of Zoom meetings or even email as well if, they, if they're not too bothered about meeting us face-to-face. -face. But having those relationships is, is really important. You know, we really need to know that what we're doing um, is keeping our customers happy as well. Brilliant. So it's interesting to hear that you sort of fell into it, sort of starting up the business. Um, yeah. What would you think has been your biggest sort of learning since you you went into business for yourself? Um, it's really hard work. <laughs> um, you know, I think you you set up your business and you think, you know, brilliant, I'm going to work for myself. Um, I'm going to have all of this flexibility. Um I'm going to, you know, be able to go out for lunch with friends and, you know, just kind of manage your own time. And you kind of do get that, um, which is something that I've enjoyed, you know, being flexible. However, um, you do have to put in a lot of work as well. You know, it doesn't just it doesn't just happen overnight. There's so much that goes into it and there's a lot that you just don't think about at the beginning you know, especially when you're set up by yourself, which I did, um, you've got to do all your own accountancy, your own marketing, you've got to generate all your own leads, you've got to go out and do networking, um, you've got to set up all of these different processes, you've got to maintain the relationship with your clients. There's so much that goes into it that it's never going to be kind of a nine or five job. It's going to be kind of a six to nine job. <laughs> Um, but you do have that flexibility and I think I never really thought about that when I set it up but it's definitely a big learning curve you know you have to learn to to work these different hours really so you never expected that did you think it would be similar to having a, a normal job I think so yeah um I never really I suppose I just didn't really give it too much thought at the beginning I think I was kind of all caught up with like this is going to be brilliant I can have so much time off I can um, do whatever I want to do kind of thing um and if you want to be successful that's just not going to happen you really have to put the hours in to to get something out of it yeah yeah totally agree totally agree so even though you said it sort of evolved it happened it 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 happened to you, the business, in, in a sense. Um, usually there is some sort of inspiration behind it. Has there been anybody that's really inspired you, whether to start your career as a business owner or during um, building your business? Um, yeah, I suppose there has been. Um, I think, you know, when I originally set up the business, I didn't really know much about the whole small business world you know you work in these big companies and you just don't realize that this other world outside of that where there's all of these small businesses working together and supporting and helping each other um and before I set up my business my brother had his own business and he's probably been my biggest inspiration because he's been running a business himself pretty much since he left university. So he started in his early 20s um, and he's kept the business running and turned it into a really successful business. 
And he's probably my biggest inspiration, really, from kind of a personal side and someone who I know, um, because he he manages everything really well. Um, and, you know, he has got this successful business that he's working for, working for, working with. Yeah. So it wasn't sibling rivalry. He did inspire you rather than if he can do it, I can do it. Uh, we've definitely had sibling rivalry in the past, <laughs> especially when we were, we were both living with our parents. Um, but yeah, it's definitely definitely not sibling rivalry anymore. Um, we do get on well with each other and we bounce ideas off each other now, which is really nice to Brilliant. kind of have that relationship. You know, always knowing that there's someone to go to to be like, oh, what do you think of this idea? Or, you know, do you think I should go ahead with this? Or, yeah, so that that kind of works really well. That's great because sometimes it can be quite lonely, can't it, being a business owner? So having somebody you can talk to like that. Yeah, it's massively um, lonely, really, because nobody else really understands what you're going through or what you're dealing with. Um, so you kind of need someone who you can who can kind of help you make decisions or who can just clarify that you are going down the right route with things. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sounds good. Um, so. Over the last few years, it's probably true to say that it's been a tricky time for businesses. There's been yeah. challenges, Brexit, COVID pandemic, um, recent economy challenges. Um, have the, Has that caused you to make any sort of significant changes to your business to adapt to the changing environment? Um, well, with a few things like Brexit, um hasn't really affected us at all. Um, we mainly work with only UK companies so that's kind of been something that hasn't really impacted the business um COVID and the economy obviously they kind of I suppose would, would impact anyone because it does affect um whether people can actually afford your services anymore um so that's that's the kind of biggest impact um I mean luckily when COVID did hit in the UK um social media was something that a lot of people decided to turn to. So, for example, you couldn't go out and do face-to-face -face networking anymore. Um, there was a lot of kind of marketing um, marketing areas that had to stop, you know, all of the print side of things. You couldn't really be putting things through people's doors anymore. Not people, like, oh, lots of things had to change. Um, but we were the one area which actually could continue going. And so a lot of businesses did come to us so kind of March April 2020 we saw I say we at the time it was just me um, <laughs> but I did see quite a lot of new clients starting with us so I got quite busy at that period which um I'm not trying to sound big-headed or anything because I know a lot of companies obviously didn't have the same um experience that I did um so I was really really lucky at that time um because I could continue to trade um I could work from wherever I needed to be so working from home wasn't an issue um using zoom was brilliant and all of our um all of the work that I do is you using a computer you know so it was just really easy to be able to to continue doing what what I was doing um, the biggest impact that I saw was as COVID kind of got longer and longer and it continued further, further and further, you know, nobody really knew what was going to happen. And there was so much uncertainty around that um, I did start to lose clients by the November time. So November 2020, um, I lost quite a few clients. I think in the space of two weeks, I lost 10 clients, which wow. for me, working by myself was was really tough you know that was a big percentage of the client base at that time um so and and the main reason for that was just you know the cost people couldn't afford to keep that cost going when there was so much uncertainty around and they didn't know how long that it was going to um it was going to continue so they had to think about you know what are their outgoings that maybe they don't need to spend it on because they obviously need to pay their their um their employees and pay for all of their other outgoings as well so yeah that was that had a big impact um however I was still able to continue you know there wasn't um a low I was low on money um 
I ended up having a good bit of December not working too <laughs> much. Um, so it was nice in some ways, but not in others. But then back in by January, it was all picking up again. And I did get a lot of new clients back in January, um, which which was quite good, really. Um, but yeah, there was that bit of uncertainty for kind of November, December time. So just so it was a bit of an opportunity rather than a challenge in some ways. There was a challenge later on, but originally it was it was a bit of an opportunity to pick up more clients in the market you're in. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Um the the beginning of, of the kind of lockdowns, it worked out really well. And um because I got those clients, it really helped to kind of keep the cash flow going mm. um for the period of time when I didn't have any clients um or didn't have any. I only had a few kind of left over. Um so it really kind of helped for that. But I suppose at the time where it was quite quiet as well, it meant that I could start working on different processes and looking at that kind of stuff as well. Um, I mean, I was continuing doing the lead generation as well, but um, it did mean that I could kind of take a step back and reflect on everything and make some decisions for the future too. And what about the next five years? What are the challenges that are going to fetch potentially your <laughs> business and your market, I suppose? Yeah, this, I mean, this is something that I do think of quite often um, because as a business, we are continue, continuing to expand. Um, like you mentioned before, you know, um, I have taken on three new employees in the last year and a half, really, um, even less than that. So um, I do want to continue with that, which is... Um, is a challenge in itself you know finding the right people who are going to fit in the team um we're also looking to um introduce a new software as well which will be a scheduling tool um for for really small kind of micro businesses to use um to schedule their social media content while they've also got the support of us as social media experts to help them along the way um, so we will be launching that, which is going to be a challenge to kind of get that out into the market um, because it's brand new, really. Um, it's a completely different software than anyone would have used before. So that's going to be a massive challenge. Um, and there is another, I'm not sure if this is a challenge or not, but it's constantly on my mind on what's going to happen to social media, <laughs> um, you know, as... Um, is, is it always going to be there? You know, there's there's been so many ups and downs with all the different platforms recently, or not even just recently, but over the last few years that we just don't know what's going to happen with social media, where it's going to go, what's going to be popular um, in the next few years. And we've got to really keep on top of all of those changes and understand you know, where the risks are, what we are going to do if something does happen and there's no longer certain platforms on the market anymore. Um, and there's always changes. So we have to ch keep on top of the changes now anyway. And, you know, social media is changing every day at the minute. Yeah. Um, it is quite difficult to keep on top of those. Um, so that's an, another challenge in itself. <laughs> really. so we have a few. <laughs> well, it sounds like some of your challenges are, uh around your growth really looking forward so so what are your plans for growth what what looking into the five years into the future where do you want to be where do you want to take the business well this is talking about my dreams really yeah. <laughs> um so five years that would take us to 2028 that's a bit of a scary thought um i would like us to continue to grow um i'd like the software um, that I just mentioned to be fully established um, and have a, a good number of, of people using the software and um, using us as a support tool really for their social media and their own marketing in their business. Um, I'd also like to grow the team. So I'd like to have, you know, a team of social media managers. We've got two at the moment. I'd like to grow that. Um, by probably, uh, I don't know if you're looking for, for numbers or anything like that, um, but I'd also like to have um, a team of people looking after our software as well. Um, so we have that kind of going and I'd love for the business to be running 
um, not necessarily without me by that time, but just being able to run um, quite well with me kind of just overseeing everything, you know. So you, you want to, you want the business to grow and then you be able to take maybe a, a bit of a step back from things and do yeah. some other, other things? Yeah, that's it. I mean, I think I, I'll always be in the business, but it would be good to kind of have people who manage certain areas as well, you know, so I'm not kind of overseeing the whole thing yeah. um, because it can get quite tricky trying to manage absolutely everything so if I've got certain people who are managing different departments um, even if they are really small it would be just good just to be able to have to go to those people rather than kind of having full meetings with lots and lots of people involved to kind of find out everything um, I don't know if that makes sense or I know no, it does absolutely yeah. it does make sense yeah it would be really nice to kind of have that approach to it really so we've, so we've taken you into the future. Now let's yeah. take you back a bit. So okay. I suppose we should never have regrets, but sometimes we might have little ones. Um, if you could do anything differently from the start again, what would you do differently? Okay. Um, like you said, I really struggle to, to have regrets um, because I kind of feel like if, you know, something hasn't gone very well you've still learned from it um and you have kind of moved on um <clears throat> there are some areas that maybe I would have changed um kind of um I mentioned previously about when I initially started I was doing all different types of marketing not just social media and it really took me a long time to make the decision to focus solely on social media. You know, I, I kind of stuck with the whole marketing experience for a lot longer than um, I maybe should have. And I wish I'd made that decision a little bit earlier um, because I think we could be a bit further on with the social media than we are now. Maybe, maybe not because of COVID, but um, yeah. I think maybe making that decision would have kind of... Um, set things in motion for me a little bit because I did spend a good bit of time being a little bit confused by what I was doing so taking the time out to be like you know stop have a think have a breather what do you want and how do you want to do this that that would have been a really good thing for me to do that makes sense it makes a lot of sense so it's just yeah. having that focus rather than trying to be all things to all people I suppose that's it yeah and I did that for too long maybe um probably it probably took me a year really to make the decision to just focus on social media so it was a long time and yeah you, I think you do need to take that step back really and just kind of have a have a bit of a talk to yourself really <laughs> on what you're doing and what you actually want and and going back even further yeah what piece of advice would you give to your 18 year old self right now oh wow um when I was 18 I had no idea of what I wanted to do or where I'd end up or um or what would happen I think maybe for me um I've probably um had a lot of time kind of lacking in confidence um there's I'm sure, you know, like, you know, having self-doubt and the whole imposter syndrome thing, um, you know, those kind of things have come up time and time again with me. Um, and I think, you know, I'd probably tell myself that, you know, everybody has those feelings. You don't need to dwell on it. You can move on from them quite quickly. Um, you know, this whole imposter syndrome, yes, there might be people who are better at, at what, whatever you're doing than you are, but you're better than the people who who are buying it from you. You know, you know your stuff a lot better than they do. And um, it really took me quite a long time to remove those feelings. Um, and I, I am over that now, you know, it, took, it did take a long time to, to get there, but there's all, the, there was always that bit of self-doubt um, in the back of my mind on whether I could do it or not. So yeah, I think I'd go back to my 18 year old self and tell her to be, more confident and have faith in herself 
Brilliant. I, I think everyone can learn from that, not just your 18 year old self. So. <laughs> um, and lastly, are, are there any sort of projects or any things you're working on at the moment or things you're going to bring out that you'd like to elaborate elaborate on? Um, the only thing for us is our new software. So that is um, our big new project and the thing that is taking up a lot of time at the moment. Um, so we are launching our new software within the next few months so hopefully by the summer um the software will, will be live um it is going to be a social media scheduling platform um so similar to a lot of the others out there however um people can create their content they can save the content in a library on there they can do hashtag um hashtag save it and hashtag research um run reports as and when they need to to be able to see how well the their social media is performing and they also get the support from the experts that we have on our team as well to be able to support them so we will be launching that within the next few months and we're currently working on our new website which will go hand in hand with that um so that's our really exciting project at the moment fantastic good luck with that sounds sounds really good and sounds like you can leverage that a lot more as a business as well so it sounds really really good um if anyone wants to get in touch with you what, what's the best way of getting hold hold of you and finding out more about its pizzazz um the best way really is either through our social media channels which is, all of our social media is at its pizzazz um and our email address on my email address is sarah at itspizzazz.com so either one of those is probably the best way fantastic sarah look thank you very much for today um i've really enjoyed our conversation and i wish you the absolute best for the future thank, thank you. you very much it's been a pleasure